he would she would differentiate in terms of thinking about that in regards to black women's bodies and how they deal with the stereotypes um, and representations uh, of their bodies? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I will tell you that when the film was out in the world initially, I often had white women come up to me after screenings and hug me, confess, cry. Because yeah, the whole issue of women in general and body image is complicated. Definitely, you could tease that out and have a lot to say. I also clearly believe that the particular sexualized history of black women in this country has affected how we deal with our bodies. A simple, very simplistic example is you will never uh, see a reference to the black woman as the virgin, the pure one, the Madonna, the one that can't be touched, put on a pedestal. Um, I'm not suggesting that's ideal, but just imagine that black women have never been cast that way or seen that way in the society. When we talk about objectifying women's bodies, in the you know early on, that was all meant to refer to white women. Like the kind of that there wasn't objectification going on with black women's bodies. There was a kind of fetishizing and a very direct ownership. kind of ownership. Great word. Different and so very right, very different genesis. And so. I was looking at that. I looked at it in a parallel way. I felt this is going to be applicable to women across the board, and I absolutely feel black women deserve a platform to explore the very specific, very specific cultural challenge of coming into your own sexuality as a black woman. There is a black Madonna in Poland. There's one in Detroit too, it's called the Shrine of the Black Madonna. <laughs> In Atlanta, too, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yes, but, so. I, I was curious, um, because you, you, I was curious about casting the woman that plays Cecilia, and because it was a film about... Oh, Cecilia. And I was wondering about your conversation with her about, oh, by the way, at the end you have to do this. Was it... Did she oh, there that? was no, oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> always... I, at one point had seen her performances. She was a very um, talented, prolific, what we call uh, sort of like um, actress who was working in experimental work throughout the city. And so I've seen, I saw her a couple of times. I just, I was determined I wanted her in the film. And so at a point in one of those revisions, she was the one I was thinking about as I was rewriting the story. And I told her, I've basically written this part for you. And so, again, long conversations about her comfort level. And she said to me, I feel I'm ready for this in my life. Like, this came to me at the moment, I need to do this. And so that was how we began to have those conversations. And I've written about this because I thought it was important to document. I, this is what I feel being a, a woman director and perhaps being an African-American woman director makes um, distinctive about, uh, my, about making film. And that's that I thought very long and hard about the exact moment in the production when we would shoot that final scene. I really gave a lot of thought to that and I had conversations with the principal crew. And we finally decided, I decided, that I wanted her to have a few days shooting easier scenes on the set. Everyone could kind of bond and get that vibe that happens. And then, not too long into the production, I'd have her do the final one. Because I knew she'd be anxious. She'd be thinking about this big scene she had to do. And I wanted her to reach a point where she could get it out of the way. You know? And then, the whole idea of a closed set was extremely important. Just Jake Ann Jones, the actress, the cinematographer, Herman Liu, and myself were on the set that day. And everything was about her comfort. What do you want? I want to play Annie Lennox. I love her. All right, you're going to have her. Don't worry, the sound, there's no sound here. Just do what you have to do. The other thing I tried to be very conscious of was I'm not one of these, you know, I feel there's a kind of aggression sometimes with directors. They brag about how many times they have the actors um, do takes over and over, like it's this macho thing. That's brutal. And it can be really debilitating for an actor who has to get it up literally every time. And I said to her, we're gonna, 
and hello, <laughs> literally. I said to her, we're gonna run through this twice and we're not stopping you. You do whatever pace you want, you do whatever you need to do, let's just run through it. We're just shooting, go, you know, action. And then I was, I just made the decision, I'll just jump cut through it. I'm not worried about that. Aesthetically, are you supposed to do that? Are you breaking a rule in film? Maybe, I don't care. People will get it. I'm just gonna jump cut through so I don't have to ask her to do it a million times so I can have coverage. Now that was a rough scene for her to do, but it didn't, it couldn't look rough. It couldn't look like she was stressed about it. She had to really walk that line, so 